All righty. Good. Okay. Uh, thank, thanks, Karen. Um, uh, you all know that there is a, a large coalition working on a Colorado uh, VRA uh, with the help of the Harvard Law School uh, Election Law Clinic. Um, the Let's see, the coalition is up to like 77 members. So um, very uh, large and uh, just about everybody, uh, every organization in the Colorado Civic Engagement Roundtable, I believe, is uh, has signed on to the coalition. Um, LWVCO and Colorado Common Cause uh, are leading the effort. Uh, we did kind of confirm that. <laughs> um, but uh, both Common Cause and LWVCO, uh, um, the new executive director of uh, Common Cause, her name is Allie Belknap. Uh, and uh, she used to uh, be with New Era, and we had a good re working relationship with her there. And so it's translated well over to Common Cause, uh, which is great because we haven't always had a good relationship with Common Cause. So um, uh, Andrea and Allie and I have been meeting outside of the general coalition meetings just to kind of determine what our next steps are and what we believe our next steps are is to do some fundraising so that we can hire a public affairs firm to actually take this over the finish line. Um, now, there's still questions. Um, you know, right now we're talking about doing this legislatively next session, the 2025 session, um, and putting it into statute. Um, I personally would rather put it into the Constitution. Uh, but we all know that that's a whole different uh, ball of wax. Um, but I would, so basically that's it. That's where we are. Um, while the text of the um, act is not set in stone, uh, we feel like it's getting close. Um, that said, if y'all have any um, further recommendations, uh, love to hear them. Um, anyone here is welcome to join the coalition meetings. If you all want another meeting to go to, <laughs> you're super welcome. Uh, this is not a closed group uh, uh, by any means. Um, those meetings are you, once Celeste? a month. Yeah, those meetings are once a month. Yes. Are they and on at the this point? LWV calendar. Um, they are on our internal calendar. Um, let me think about if they should be on our public facing calendar. It's okay with me if they're not. I mean, you've got 77 organizations. They probably don't want it on our public calendar. Right. You know, um, I, mean, I know that we are, we are, we uh, are represented by you and Jen Clellan. And Beth Mom's cog. So yes, I feel and like Andrea we're well represented. Too. And Andrea, yeah. okay. Yeah. And at the last meeting, Beth was uh Beth Malmskog was like, uh, I don't really know who I'm representing here. And I'm like, us, you're representing us. Please say you're representing us. And she was like, cool. So um that was good as well. Um, and and of course, Jen and Beth are just fantastic to have there. Um but I'm, you know, happy to share anything, the coalition list, um, the, the meetings are, well, let me see, they. Just if we they, wanted to sit in and listen sometime. Mm -hmm. um, I give some feedback, but I don't even know if that was considered. Sorry. Um. Okay, the next one is Friday the 19th of April at 10 a.m., um, which I believe is a non-LAC day. Um, are they I'm happy. Zoom? What was that? They are. are. They yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, the goal is to um, do the legislation for next year because April 19th is... Like it's too can't do it this year. <laughs> oh no, we yeah. 
there's no way April at 10. Yes. Yeah, I'd love to. And how do we get a link to that meeting? Um, if you want a link, why don't you raise your hand right now and I will send you a calendar invite right now. Oh. Karen, Neil, Barb. Beth, would uh, we... Kathleen, I um, I haven't had the put... pleasure of meeting you. Would, would we want to put that link on, on, well, we won't meet for the election task force until after that meeting is mm -hmm. over. But would you would it be appropriate for me to send that link out and that notification to election task force people or not? Um I don't sure. I can also say that these meetings, um because we feel like the text is kind of settled, um, though again not set in stone, these meetings aren't that exciting right now. Okay. Uh, I'm going to be real honest with you. You know, there's kind of a, a lull in action um, as we figure out next steps. Now, um, of course, if any of you want to say, you know, I'll act as the public affairs firm. I'll take this. This will be my project. <laughs> hey, so I, I'm, I'm <laughs> let's talk. Comment, but. <laughs> If I raise my hand, you might be including me on the list. So maybe I can. Um, so it sounds like you're beyond the stakeholder, develop the language, and you've moved on to campaign mode already. And how can Kinda. we get this through the legislature? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, that said, I, I do not mean to discourage anyone from attending. Uh, you're all very welcome. Yeah. So I, I just have kind of like to listen and hear the status and where things are. Sure. Mm -hmm. This is what I want. Kathleen, would you be so kind as to put your email in the chat for me? No. Thank you. Jerry? Add me. Great. Celeste, did you want a link? I'll let Jen and Neil tell me what happens. Great. I can say no to something? Wow. Yep. <laughs> I'm writing that down. <laughs> yeah, somebody. Yeah, okay. This is being recorded. Kathleen, just nod your head. I am assuming I have your email since you're here. Are you getting emails from me on these meetings? I think I am. I, okay. you know, I'm a relatively new member to LWV, and I um, attended a couple of the um, naturalization uh, oh, meetings great. over in Aurora, and that was. Um, and so I met some people obviously there. And um, so I, I've just really been interested in in kind of finding out about how the whole thing with the voting stuff works, because that's a big interest of mine. OK, actually, I don't have you. Which which league are you affiliated with? You don't have uh, to be Arapaho Douglas. Arapaho. OK, all right. I'm adding right. you to the list. <clears throat> Welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much. For yes, nice to meet all of you. <laughs> so sorry, we've probably we've been getting into some lingo here that I uh, hope hasn't gone over your head. Uh, well, we've been... has, you know what? That's what learning's all about, right? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Kathleen, uh, I can see your email address when I log into the LWVCO website. Oh, I go great. to today's event. And then I click on your name because you're a registrant and that your your email address pops up. Okay, I I just sent um uh, I just put it in the chat. You just put it in the chat. Got too. it. Yeah. Okay. Is well, is that uh, is that all you have to say, um, Beth, about sure. where where things stand? Uh, pretty much. Uh, we're figuring about a, a $60,000 bill for a public affairs firm. Um, is that the 
for each of the 77 members or is that total or? That's total, total. Okay. Um, so, uh, so we're figuring around uh, 10 grand a month uh, in a six month uh, push. We and don't think we'll like have- Bigger hmm? organizations will, will contribute more money kind of things and- uh, we're looking at going to foundations. We're not okay. looking for uh, uh, partner orgs to contribute money. Okay. So, hi, Tony. All right. Then, in that case, welcome, Tony. Um, Jerry, I'm going to turn it over to you at this point and... Um, Beth, do you need to leave fairly quickly? Uh, relatively, but I'm not uh chomping at the bit, so it's okay. fine. Well, I just, I, I just wanted Jerry to have enough time to ask you the questions that could address the questions that she had. So, all right, Jerry, sure. you're I'll on. talk fast. Um, <laughs> yeah, don't worry about it. <laughs> and as far as Kathleen goes, a little background. For, for several months, we've been working on what we're referring to as LWVCO Colorado. Uh, principles of voting and what are the guideposts that we're following. Um, there's been some editing occurring on Google Docs and I'm happy with all of that. Uh, we're talking about principles and the question that came up at our last meeting in February was where do we put these once we finish with them? I stumbled across principles for Colorado in the program book. And it's a one paragraph, six line statement on sustainability. So there is precedent to, for where to put it. However, ours is about three pages long. And I don't know that it fits there, but I'm ready for suggestions and comments and opinions. And where do we put this? Um. I want to hear from Tony too, because my first thought was principles in the program book as well. Um, Cause this is your, uh, this is not a new position. No. It's, um, it sort of nails things. Well, it's, what do I want to call it? It, it more clearly uh, delineates the ideas that we want to pursue or can keep in place in regards to voting and elections. Yeah, so, it probably serves both voter service and action and advocacy. Uh, the principle the, uh, that I'm referring to, the principle on sustainability is on page five. No, oh, yeah, I, I know what that one is. Okay. But I was thinking this particular thing, the principles of voting really kind of, yeah. Because is both groups access that in terms of their work. Is someone able to put a link to the uh, paper in the chat? Uh, it's in Google Docs. I'll have to see if I hang. I'll I'll look and see if I can pull it up in my stuff. What's the title of it? LWBCO principles of voting. Uh, and this is the document that a few of us reviewed right a month ago. it's continuing to be reviewed okay yeah, but yeah I, don't, I haven't seen it in a couple months since i worked on started it or work started work on it We could probably edit edit it down in a couple of places. I I included the nineteenth amendment to the Constitution. Do we really need that? Yeah, probably. That would be my first first recommendation is to see how much you can edit out of it. Yeah. So it's kind of just bullets or representative. Yeah, we're pretty much in bullets as we stand. Okay. As we stand. Is it in addition to the white paper? 
Yes, it's separate yes. from the white paper. I can't, I cannot find that. Who was it that uploaded it to Google Docs? Somebody did that for us. Was that you, Neil, or someone <clears throat> else? Um, I'm not sure. It's told that um, it's not supposed to be. Wait, you're not talking about the Colorado VRA. Never mind. Sorry. No, no, <laughs> no. LWBCO principles of voting. So at this point, you, sorry, Karen. The no, contrast no. between the existing principle on sustainability and this one is uh, ours is more bullet by subject or topic. And there's his uh, a statement in a paragraph. You're looking for the principles of voting draft? Yes. I think, let me see if this is If, if you can send us the link to that. Um, Neil, that everybody can pull. I, I have a link. We'll see if we okay. can spell it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just not sure how in Google Docs it's set up for other people to see it. I mean, I have it on my Google Docs, but. Um, this one. Has yeah, I have a that specific link. Specific list of people with access. So if anybody wants to be added to access, let me know. I do. You've got it, Kathleen. I'm sorry, who was that? Sorry, that was me, Beth. <laughs> Beth. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to be added to it too. I think that's probably the best way for me to catch up to where everybody else is. <laughs> cool. And... Kathleen, you put your email there, right? Yeah, I. you can call me Kay. It's Kathleen sounds like my mother is calling me to come. <laughs> I understand. I know the feeling. We get that. <laughs> okay, I put it in the chat. And I think I just added the two of you. Actually, let me make sure I did it the right way. Yeah. I see it. Great. Great. Okay. Anybody else? Yeah. I may already be on there, Neil. I'm not sure. I, Karen, you're you're always on, Karen. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. By the way, I was in uh, Washington, D.C. over the last three days and saw several active league members with the election verification network. So oh, cool. we're everywhere, including, let's see, how did that work? The current... Oh, is it the new director of Common Cause that used to be the national president of the league? Something like that. Yeah, national CEO of the league. Yeah. What, um, is this the easiest way for people to look at this or would it be helpful to, um, I think we probably need to go through. I see that there have been a number of suggested changes on this. So um, we probably need to go through there and which we don't need to take time to do now. But yeah, well, I guess if you could show it, it would be helpful because I can't get into it or I'm uh, giving you a secret you password. Here we go. Yeah, I got to get the secret password or something. Okay. You want it, your Gmail account, Jerry? Jerry. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. I just added Jerry. Thank you. Did you add I me? Just added you Barb. I just added Barb. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I have a Gmail account, but I usually use my Comcast account. 
Yeah, you, you have Tony in there. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So if you click the link in the chat box, you should be able to get into the document. Should we go down to where there are corrections? Yeah, I'm fine with that one. Talking about uh, oh, is, is somebody sharing now? Uh, we can catch up with all the windows. Yeah, I know when we discussed that, it just seemed like that sort of left it open to sounding mushy people who are worried about elections reality. So are we good on this top bullet point? On the verify voter eligibility? Correct. Yeah. I'm fine with that. <clears throat> Me too. Is anyone not fine? I think it's okay. a big improvement. Okay. The, the truth is what we can do is make some cl clean this up right now while we have people to provide some input and then y'all can go back and take a look at it and um if if you if you don't have access to actually make the changes if you want to send them to me um i think you all have my email you can certainly do that <laughs> yeah and as you see and as i i think our normal practice is it's even though you're you're in as editors which allows you to see the history it's best to um be in suggesting mode so that others exactly. can yes yeah. yeah don't change don't anybody, right here right don't anybody do it don't anybody go in and edit <laughs> just just mm. send yes. edits to karen okay yeah I, I wish there was a mode in in google where you could see the the history the version history is very helpful feature under the file menu for google docs but you can only see that if you're an editor and then it always launches you in editor mode and then you might, mm -hmm. you know, inadvertently, really inadvertently make any kind of change, but uh, makes it hard to keep track. Well, I think you can go back, can you not? Um, and I'm not as, as yeah. well versed yeah, in this. Yeah, you can undo system, them. But I think just... you can go back and see previous previous versions of the document so that if something happens and somebody's accidentally gone in and actually made a change. You yeah, can... what I'm saying is that you can only see that if you have editing privileges. Okay. And so when we do a share, we can share you as a viewer or as a suggester or as an editor. And in order to let people see the history, I like to share as editor, but that means that by default you start editing and there's a difference between editor and editing, right? Well, but, but, but Neil, if you are listed as an editor, can you go up in this upper right-hand corner? Thing yep. Share. That's you can exactly click. What I'm yeah, asking. you can do. Very clear. You, you just, you all just need to make sure that it's on suggesting. If you, if you're looking through mm -hmm. it and you think, oh, I see a word that needs to be changed or there's some grammar or something like that. Exactly. I, I just make sure you're in, in the, in the suggestion mode. <laughs> exactly. Thank you for being much clearer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are we all good with uh, changing uh, this top uh, bullet point and deleting, switching them out? Yes. I it am. looks much better to me. Yes. I think that's a yes, Beth. Does everybody okay. know what certification means? Is it? I, I think it's fine if people know what certification means. Are you asking us if we know what it means, or do you mean the general public? The people who will be reading this document. Well, I don't know if we can answer for them. Yeah. To me, it means the final, final statement. 
we could just say before certification of the election. You know, do they mean certification of the audit? I mean, you know, like, I don't know. I just couldn't imagine. Of the election results? That sounds better. I mean, at least have some clarification. Yeah. Okay, certifi before certification of the election results. That may clarify it for some folks that aren't sure about that. That's fine. Okay. On the next one, the highlighting of channeling election disputes. I don't... What does the yellow highlight mean? Off on the right, you'll see, I'm trying to w look at the entire window and, and the I can't see the whole window and I'm- Yeah. I think there's a, a way in Zoom to see. scale things, but I haven't found it. I'm feeling confused. Whoever- but yellow Resolves. highlight means that there's a comment. And if you're in the if you go in the document directly, you can click on the yellow highlight and it will highlight the comment off to the right. So in some of these are suggestions and some are just kind of questions or yeah. Well, I think isn't it there? Isn't it there, Neil? Is is the channeling election disputes? Is that was your comment? Is there an alternative that is being deprecated? Okay, so and it's there. When I look That's... at the page in in the Zoom share, I don't see the very right hand side, but that's I think at my end. So mm -hmm. I think the question of who resolves election disputes can be very political. I worry, um, and if this is a very local election dispute, you know, a little town severance colorado has an election dispute should it go all the way to the state judiciary i don't know i'm just wondering um where we got this language how it's worked in other places um just yeah, i think that some of the recent changes in rule and and maybe even statute there aren't that many statute well there have been changes to streamline some of the procedures um, to avoid, you know, to allow, let's say, the Secretary of State to do things. And there's been pushback saying you should have more local control. And, you know, we, we don't know whether we're going to be worried about a Secretary of State that has too much power or a local clerk that has too much power. So we try to... You, you know, some state judiciary be... people are elected, others are appointed, exactly. some are independent. I mean, I, I just, I know Colorado has its own system. This is Colorado's principle. So, you know, we should be certainly looking, I mean, maybe it's okay because of the way Colorado's judiciary is set up, but. Um, I, I think this is just for Colorado. So, yeah, we, yeah, we don't yeah. need to be broader. So just what would an alternative be? I would well, like to change the word channeling. That to me that means some sort of clairvoyant <laughs> content. Well, is the exactly. is is the real meaning of that like funneling or directing? Elevating. I think here it means elevating, like elevating the disputes or putting okay. them through the state judiciary channel or something, the judicial system rather than the secretary of state deciding, I think is what we're trying to get at here. Yes. But what else, if you don't like the secretary or the state judiciary, is there anything else? But, but who's the final arbiter, Tony, on that? I'm fine with this, with the judiciary. I'm just hearing that it seems to me that Celeste is objecting to that. Am I wrong? Mostly, I'm I'm wondering the provenance of it, and um, certainly, I was saying that different states handle judicial appointments or elections differently. So we don't necessarily want to just copy what another state does, although I think we have a pretty good judicial system. But That's you know, I, I don't know that we want the state judiciary to be weighing in on every little dispute. I, I feel like 
isn't that what the canvas board is for a little bit, Neil? Well, I mean, I think that's a uh, points to a, an example that's good to talk about. So there are canvas boards in Colorado that sometimes refuse to certify an election because either of frustration or because there's, I mean, I don't know of any real problems recently, but sometimes people are, you know, being told by their political uh, leaders to just object. Now, should a dispute like a canvas board refusing to certify go to the Secretary of State? Should it go to the judiciary? If it goes to the judiciary now, that, you know, that takes longer. Um, yeah. I, I don't know what I think. I, I mean, I'm with Celeste. I'm curious where this came from. I'm wondering what the alternatives are. That's what my comment here says. Is there an alternative that we're saying don't do that instead? Um, you know, who has standing? If you say it only goes through the judiciary, then maybe citizens don't have standing to do that. I mean, it's a complicated process. So I don't, I don't know what I would recommend there. Me, what I, I, I like. I like Celeste's suggestion on of, of elevating because I think that is a better word than channeling and having with Jerry, it sounds like other stuff. But maybe elevating election election disputes. Um, unresolved election unresolved, disputes. Okay. Unresolved election disputes. Well, if there if to me what that implies is that they have tried to they they tried resolution at the local level and that's not working. So is there is there anything in place that I don't know right now where there's kind of a chain that you work through? Do you go directly to it is the next step to the Secretary of State or do you go directly to the to state judiciary? I, I think the it, answer will depend on what the nature of the, of the complaint is or the dispute. Say so that again. For example, for that canvas board thing, it is currently either I think it's law that the Secretary of State can either decide for themselves that they're going to certify a particular county or appoint a special special master to look into it. So, um, you know, I don't, I guess I, in, in some sense, I'd, I'd either like to know, I'd have this be more explicit about the cases that it's talking about or... Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm leery of making this. A... Why don't we think about this? Why don't yeah. we, instead hold, of spending more time on this right now, why don't you all yeah. take a look at it and think about what your concerns are and you can kind of do what Neil did rather than, you know, you certainly make suggested edits or you can do what he did and and, and he, there's a way to be able to make notes. Of this Aaron, I, I'm hearing what you said. But I would maybe throw in what we did with uh, Y and Z, which is to use retired justices and ju people on the Supreme Court. Or would they be willing to do that? Well, we told them they had to do it for Y and Z, so. <laughs> <laughs> we could check also, that out. There are some possible not alternatives. Not all election disputes have to do with candidates. It could be, should I be allowed to bring my concealed carry into the voting booth area? You know, I mean, there could be any number of things. Well, it seems to me like these election disputes are election disputes that have to do with the outcome of the election, not whether I can bring a gun in or whatever. I mean, I would assume that gets handled right there at the moment. <clears throat> Yes, I have a big imagination. Election disputes covers a lot more yeah. <laughs> for me. <laughs> um, well, we're just we're drawing shorter on time. So is everybody OK with the suggestion to kind of let everybody go in and take a look at it and add their two cents? Yeah. And bring this back later and then let's move on down to the next. Um, Maybe Aaron, I don't have access to this document, just FYI. I tried to, I just now asked for access. Okay, well, Neil, give, well, I think Neil look will at give that. you that. I will allow Celeste and I will allow Barbara. Sorry, I didn't notice that. 
Yeah, I'm having issues right now uh, opening the document. So I don't know. I don't know what happened. I could see it before, but now I can't. Okay, well. Um... You know what, if you want access to the document, put your name in the chat. Neil can take a look at the chat. And then after we finish this conversation, he can okay. go ahead and give you access again. I'm just, we're on a time. Yeah. We've got some time issues here. So um, yeah. I, I think you're if, in if there everybody's with okay with that. Kathleen, but go ahead. Okay. Um, all, all right. Beth, that next section is... <clears throat> we're moving on down to uh, there the vigilant attention must be paid is is your change in language neil support the public's ability to understand you're wanting to replace I, I think, yeah i'm replacing support. those two points to uh both explicitly point to our election security position and just kind of frame it. Yeah, I'm fine with that replacement. Yeah, I am too. And I and I like the reference edition, so yeah. <laughs> Nice job, Neil, as always. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great way to handle the election security that we have these different documents that you can reference when that you have a need to. Sure. And all of that is simply the okay. Is, is all of that is simply the document that the link is provided to. <clears throat> so I could take out other and FYI on the two following bullet points. Right. Yeah, I think so. And actually, we can take all the rest of these thirteen bullet pointed things because Neil's put the link in there. I yeah. believe Isn't that correct. So yeah, I think we discussed that a few months ago. Yeah. So we can take this whole page. Yes, yeah, all whole that page. Is, that's just a reiteration, Beth, of, of what's in the links, the position link. So, okay. Well, thank you. I think we made some progress on that. Um, again, if you need access to the document and for some reason you can't get into it, uh, be sure Kay has put her name back in there again, Neil. Um, Neil will make sure that you have access. So any other quick questions on that? I'd hate to push us, but I do want to oh. get us to this. Yes, somebody. No, okay. I keep keep us moving, Karen. You're okay. Great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All righty. The next item that was on the agenda, the it has been brought up that in some countries voting is mandatory, which I find quite fascinating because how do you want do you want to require somebody to vote who doesn't want to vote? And how do you make them vote if they don't want to vote? So anyway, um, uh, actually, Celeste has submitted to LWV US to do a Zoom workshop on this. Has, and so she has sub submitted a proposal for that to occur at um, the convention this year. And so we will wait to hear what she finds out with that. I Hopefully they agree that it's something that would be um, it, it, at the very least, a very interesting conversation. So at this point, I want to turn it over to Celeste so she can present a little bit more information. Uh, when we put it out to this group, many of you responded and said, yes, you would like to know some more about that. So Celeste, you're up. So this idea came up because it hasn't been talked about very much. And it's it ha the mandatory voting happens in other countries and we're so strong we're such strong individuals here that you know requiring some the entire electorate to do something is 
kind of probably counter to the way the U.S. works. You know, we have individualized health plans. We don't have a socialized medicine. You know, we do have Social Security. But um, I just, uh, this also came up because some people are trying to move a lot of elections to either November or to even years or both because that's when more people turn out to vote. And so a counter argument to that is, well, if people had to vote in every election, then you wouldn't have to feel this need to move some contest to a particular time when say you're voting for president or US Senator or US House of Representatives. Um, and I want people to pay attention to all the races. We want, we don't want people to just look at the national contest. We want them to look at all of them. So, so I read the book 100% Democracy, and I was fascinated by it. Uh, at the Boulder County League program planning, we discussed this idea. And at, after I had first brought up this idea, Rick Hassan, who's an election law expert who has, I, I heard him talk in a California, I think it was a league Zoom event and he's quoted often. He wrote a book and he wrote a New York Times article about the affirmative right to vote. And we do not in the United States constitution have an affirmative right to vote, but countries like Germany do and Canada do. So maybe we should get an affirmative right to vote. Um, in Colorado, we kind of had an affirmative right to vote until Amendment 76. Uh, before Amendment 76, it said every citizen who is 18 year old, 18 years old can has the is eligible to vote or qualified to vote or whatever. And then Amendment 76 changed it to only a citizen. So that cut down the under 18 voting in the primary election. Um, so we've got these two ideas, mandatory voting, which is a, a duty. Some people call it civic duty voting. That's what the 100% democracy people like to call it. You can call it compulsory voting, mandatory voting, any of those names. And then we've also got this idea of affirmative right to vote, like a constitutional affirmative right to vote. So the title that we submitted for the workshop is voting colon, a right and a duty question mark. <laughs> um, so we'll, so, uh, and then there'll be a description and uh, the, we got two speakers and I guess I'm signed up to be the facilitator since I did the application. Uh, one of the speakers is Rahila Ahmed. She's uh, lives in Prince George's County, and she just joined the league because they, I said, they prefer league members on these workshops, and she immediately joined the league. She had, She's young. She has been a school board member in Prince George's County. She's uh, got a Pakistani dad and an Indian mom, but she was born in the U.S., has grown up here, um, or vice versa on those to Pakistani Indian things. Um, she works for 100% democracy. Um, so I think she'll be great. And then Rick Hassan, the, the lawyer uh, who's an election law expert nationally recognized will has, has agreed to uh, speak even though that is his busiest week of the year. If you remember at the Denver uh, National Convention, the Dobbs decision dropped that week. And then we had pro, you know, we marched in the streets and things like that. The week of the National League Convention is the week that all the Supreme Court decisions come down. So he's very busy that week, but he said he thought he could carve out an hour to do a Zoom meeting. So I'm very excited about that. Um, and then I, I have a, I invited also a, University of Michigan Law School professor Echo Yanka, who 
uh, has written a, a Fordham Law Review article called Compulsory Voting and Black Citizenship and brings up some very interesting ideas. So maybe we'll quote from that. He's going to be out of the country, so he can't make it. Um, and then Nate Ela, who is at, I think, Temple University, just moved there from Cincinnati. Anyway, he did a study of compulsory voting in um, Kansas City, Missouri in the late 1800s and how that went. So uh, we have a lot we can talk about. And then in addition to all that, you know, we can talk about um, how compulsory voting could affect election timing, as I already mentioned. We could talk about the things that would happen if you have compulsory voting, like the U.S. would need to make voting easier. You know, maybe there'd be more mail-in ballots. Maybe you'd have to have postage paid on all your ballots. Um, you know, voters who don't have a permanent address, there'd have to be a way for them to be able to easily vote. Um, uh, you know, if if there's a record of who's voted and who hasn't, does that lead to doxing? I, you know, there are a lot of different issues you could talk about. Um, the vote, the Voting Rights Act, is would definitely be come under the glare if we had mandatory voting. And then the final question is. What would we work on first? Would we work on mandatory voting first, and then try, or 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 and not worry maybe about an affirmative right to vote, or should we work first on an affirmative right to vote, because mandatory voting might not apply to everybody, depending, you know, like that's one of the questions that we would definitely ask the panelists. Neil, you have your hand up. Yeah, I just, um, I, you, I think you said something along the lines of uh, if we make it mandatory, then they have to make it easy. And I, I, just first principles, <laughs> if they make it mandatory, they give themselves the ability to punish people more frequently. <laughs> and we have a history of people being punished in ways. So, you know, I, I think my... I, the framing that um, that makes more sense to me is to emphasize the right to vote rather than the punishment for not voting. Although, you know, I certainly uh, recognize that that it can increase turnout to um, to give people that, that expectation of voting. But I just the, <laughs> I, I hesitate at uh, giving you know, it's almost like a poll tax in reverse, right? You know, it's like, well, you know, here are the people that we don't like who aren't voting. We can tax them some more. I don't know. This is this is what I think we need to talk about. And, and it's, I am not aware of this ever having been discussed at the national convention. And that was one of the questions they asked uh, at, at on the application. Has this been discussed? at a national convention. They're gonna give priority to things that haven't been discussed before. I'm look at, I think it'd be a great discussion. We'll see what happens, but. You know, I, I think it all plays into that affirmative action. I mean, you can imagine states where they've made it damn near impossible for people to get to the polls in certain precincts uh, and then penalizing them for not being able to get there in time because of their work schedule or other life circumstances would be really bad. But I also think we have to be careful about mandating things and the fact that people get ornery about the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and that was true with vaccines. And I don't think most people remember way back to polio. They didn't make it actually mandatory even when they did all kinds of social engineering like have my neighborhood Glenwood Street had to go to the nearby junior high to get the vaccine at a certain hour. And we still had people who were clearly disappeared from the environment. Uh, and of course, just recently with COVID, we've had all kinds of backlash against vaccines in general because we were trying to push people to do it. So I th yeah, I think it's a, it's a strange balancing act that we have to figure out. We wanna motivate 
and we don't want to penalize unnecessarily. Yeah, I guess the question I have is why hasn't there already been an affirmative right to vote amendment? <laughs> would it not pass? I mean, well, that the Voting Rights Act passed. <laughs> I mean, it unpassed, but got taken away. <laughs> so no, not everybody wants everybody to vote. I think that's the the basic problem. Can we I, get thirty eight states? <laughs> I, I, I think part of <laughs> my opinion, I would think that part of what you would need for this in order to be for it to be really successful is number one, there needs to be some kind of civics education component to this. I don't think we do a very good job in our schools any longer of doing that. I, I guess one of my questions is, do I really want somebody voting who hasn't bothered to, doesn't have any idea what the issues are, doesn't yeah. know who the candidates are, somebody tells me I have to vote and I just go in and mark something. <laughs> or you don't mark something, you just turn in the ballot. Yeah. And and Neil gave an interesting statistic of, of what happens in Ecuador where Maybe you could talk a little bit more about that, Neil, because I didn't know what all the parameters were. Were these only national elections? Was it only one national election? Was it over 10 years? But, but basically 30% of the people turned in blank ballots. <laughs> yeah, I'm forgetting the details. That was just something that popped up during our uh, election verification conference um, from someone who has audited some elections in Ecuador. I think I honestly think that it's a question of how can you enforce it. You can pass all kinds of rules. If you can't enforce them, what good are they? So in Australia, they have um, mandatory voting. And I have a friend whose brother is an Australian citizen, lives there, has never voted. And maybe it's because he's never registered to vote. <laughs> so maybe if you don't register, then they don't go after you, but maybe if you do register, they go after you. I don't know. Yeah. So that, people from registering is another problem, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, the point would be, are people just going to devote a lot of uh, energy and attention to figuring out how to get around the rule? That's really counterproductive too. So if they want to put that much energy into not voting, I mean, I, I, you they know, want to I want them to put energy them. into not being told to do something. Yeah. No. I would rather see us lead with a carrot and not with a stick. Um, we have very many recognized freedoms in the country and as citizens. And to me, this sort of struck me as being, you're taking away one of my choices of freedoms. You're making me do something. Okay. So that was a perspective that hit me. I can probably learn more about this, but that was my initial reaction. We're not telling you how to vote or even to fill in the ballot. We're just saying for the ballot. Yeah. I understand, understand. I think it is a good topic for discussion though. The biggest tragedy in this country is that we have too many people who are just not engaged. And I know we yep. have all kinds of arguments that give them a pass, but the truth <laughs> is that when you don't get engaged, um, what happens over time? I counted the number of co candidates or uh, you know elected seats that I vote on, and it was something like forty-five. <laughs> it was a lot, yeah. and you know, and then that doesn't even count every year you got ballot measures. So, you, you know, people have lives. I can understand them not wanting to, them wanting to trust their government to take care of things and move on. Or, you know, what they sometimes do is they say to some friend who does know what's going on, tell me how to vote. And then that friend gets two votes. That's true. So. Well, Would you like me to talk talking. about? Bring us the feedback. What's that? It's an interesting topic. Bring us the feedback from convention. Okay. Um, would you like me to talk about anything else? Uh, the theory initiatives or this upcoming election bill that Steve Fenberg's going to drop that I want the I want the league to 
be involved with. Can well, you just clarify the timing? Does does your panel or thing for the meeting need to be approved? Is there a timeline? What's the the application is due today. It was submitted two days ago. Uh, the caucus slots will be notified April 4th. I'm assuming the workshops will be notified around the same time. I'm thinking they want to fill the caucus slots first because those are ones that are specifically related to a plenary motion. So they need those slots to do their advocating. Great, thank you. Is this something that it, it's after one now? And the only reason I'm pushing is because I have an appointment that I have to go to. Is is this something we could talk about at our April the 18th meeting, Celeste? Can I say one thing real quick about um, uh, this election omnibus bill that Steve Fenberg is going to be sponsoring is um, 40 pages or so. And we're probably going to ask him if he would uh, in the bill, create a task force to study proportional representation. So we've talked about this. We actually came up with this idea in the alternative voting methods task force, but I thought that this task force might want to know about that also. And, and when is that, and when is that supposed to, when is that supposed said, to happen? Are, who are, are I said that? maybe two weeks before the bill comes, it's we're halfway through the session at the moment. Is this the SOS bill? Basically, yeah. And they, they I heard that they want to make some changes because they've got the CD4 special congressional election and they haven't done one in 50 years. And so they want to um, figure out what to do. <laughs> they, they need to make yeah. sure they've got things set up so they can do it appropriately. It is incredibly complicated for them to run a special election at the same time as a primary election because the rules are different for the two of them and the ballot layout is crazy complicated with different people getting to vote on different candidates and confusion they're they're running around frantic it's bad well can they change the rules before they have to print the ballots I'm I'm told that it seems unlikely that the Democrats are interested in making the rules easier for the Republicans to fall flat on their face. So, oh, that's not nice. I think of it as being easier for the election administrators. My goodness, you would think that that would be what they would prioritize mm -hmm. if you were charitable for the voters. <laughs> not, yeah, yeah. yeah yes, voters. we sometimes forget about them, don't we, Jeff? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm hoping that the election administrators are thinking about the voters, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, yeah. they either think about working. the rules they have to follow, or they think about the voters. And in this case, they're trying to make it. They're trying to make it work for the voters, and so maybe they want to change the rules they have to follow. <laughs> yeah, sad. Well, it's going. To, it's, it's it's going to be interesting, and for a number of reasons. <laughs> And and I think that the thing that's especially interesting for us over here in CD three is the fact that Bobert has decided she's running in CD four. Is that that creates additional problems for the Democratic candidate at this point? Um, just in the sense that. Um, It just in the sense that that she probably would have been the she probably would have been the the chosen Republican candidate just because of name recognition. Now there are, gosh, four maybe five Republicans that are running, um, each more extreme than the other. <laughs> so oh. it, it will be an interesting election here. Well, is there anything else? Celeste, are some of the other things that I know you wanted to, to, to talk about today and share with the group, would the, would the April the 18th meeting still work for you to raise some of those there'll things? Be, there'll be plenty to talk about on April 18th. Okay. Um, the, just to let everybody know, there have been over 60 initiatives filed. The deadline for filing initiatives to be on the November ballot is uh, 
tomorrow. Yay. So the, <laughs> the legislative council staff is very excited that tomorrow's the deadline. They're expecting <laughs> a no big more. slew of initiatives. <laughs> if I had time, I'd want to do some of my own, but. Well, what's, what's the final day that they can accept signatures on those petitions to actually get them, those that are approved, uh, well, to, to get them on the ballot, those that have so to for, First, go you go to the Legislative Council staff and they read your your right. initiative and see how it goes. And then, and then you go to the title board and then they approve single subject or not. And then you decide which of the many 60 initiatives you put through that you want to actually collect signatures on you create the petition you get it the form approved which i think is you know they, they work with you to make sure it works out okay and then um and then you collect all the signatures and you have i don't know how many days and what's the deadline i mean is there, i don't know okay it, it varies okay all right well um those of you that are interested, the Initiative 89 petitions are in the street right now. If you want to see abortion codified into the Colorado Constitution, you might want to do it. You don't have to sign a petition in your particular Senate district. You can sign it any place as long as you're a registered Colorado voter. Um, if you haven't signed and you are supportive of this, um, you can contact an organization called COBOL that might be able to help you find somebody that is that is carrying a petition. Uh, several Senate districts have already, at this point, we think, gotten the requisite number of, of uh, signatures. I'm happy to say that my Senate district down here, La Plata, Montezuma, Montrose, et cetera, that we believe we have uh, enough verified signatures. And there are several other districts as well. But I have been told that they are still collecting signatures. And so if you haven't signed, but you want to, please do so, even if you think that your Senate district is probably already good to go. So, um, all right, unless there is something else that somebody feels is really pressing that they would like to share with the group today, um, I will share the link to this particular um, task force on the agenda the next time I send it out. And if there is anything that you all think of that you'd like to see on the agenda for next time, please just email me and let me know. Well done. Thanks, Thank Karen. You, Thanks, everybody. Thank you all for coming. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Kay. All right. See you all later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Well. Yeah.